Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about the 12 books that I read in the later half of November. Hello, everyone. Look at this. I mean, look, look at this. This is my crowning jewel shelf over here. Love it. You can't fully see the shelves here, but the graduation present to myself for graduating college was purchasing these shelves that I've been dreaming of for forever. They're the Ikea Billy bookcases and they are almost touching the ceiling. I love them. Look how stunning this looks. You can look forward to a bookshelf tour soon. I don't know when I'm gonna film it soon, so hopefully it'll be posted soon. This setting just looks so much more professional in my brain than me sitting at my desk with you seeing my messy room behind me. This is just perfect. I'm in love with it. I've read all of the books that you have seen, that you're seeing in this frame, and that I love. So I, I just love this. I have not been filming in front of books that I love in quite a long time because of the craziness of my life and how everything is going on in here. So I am in love if you could not tell. And yeah, um, you can look forward to a bookshelf tour very soon. Anyway, with that out of the way, we're going to be talking about the 12 books that I read in the later half of November. I was really trying this month to read a book a day to get to at least 30 books. I think I was like three or two books short, but that's okay because I was just getting school done. I am completely done with school now. I've completed all my assignments and now I just have graduation. So I'm very excited to be done. So definitely school played into the reason why I did not complete the challenge that I wanted. Hopefully I will get to 31 books in December. I don't know, we'll see. I'm trying to now um, think about applying for jobs. So very skilly. <laughs> anyway, enough of my jibber jabber. Let's get into these books. I read actually, I feel like more duds than studs, you know, um, especially in the, the first couple books in this video have not been favorites. I think I only have one five star read for this entire video today. <laughs> so um, I'm honestly also being very more picky in the books that I read. I'm getting, I hate to say slumpy, but I am feeling kind of slumpy, you know, um, I haven't really been even wanting to be picking up books in the last couple days anyway. And that's definitely, I think, played into my reading. Let's just get right on into these books, shall we? I'm going to be going in chronological order of the order that I read them. So the book that I read after my mid-month point of my November wrap-up, mid-month wrap-up, which will be linked down below if you have not checked that out. But the next one that I read after that video is Let's Get Textual by Tegan Hunter. This is her first book in her like texting series. All of them revolve around like texts, I think. I believe Tegan Hunter is going to be at Book Bonanza next year year and I'm trying to read authors preparing for that event even though it's quite a long ways away but Tegan Hunter is one of the authors that I've not read from before so I was like why not let's just pick up this book. This book is basically about our heroine who gets a text from a unknown number thinking that it is her brother because her brother loses his phone constantly and so she's just texting with him when in actuality it's this guy she's never met before. He thinks he's talking to a client and they're texting. They realize that they're not the person they think and they soon develop this friendship over texting and then it d turns into something more once they finally meet each other in person. I gave this three stars, more of a two. Honestly, if I'm thinking about it, I kind of want to change my rating. This was way too cheesy for my liking. And that's just not my taste in books a lot. I get, I, I hate cringe. Like secondhand embarrassment, cringing literally makes my skin crawl. Like I hate it. And so this just unfortunately was not my cup of tea. The cringe factor, not it for me. And I get people love that stuff. That is not that is not my type of humor. Like, for example, I don't like The Office. I've tried watching it a billion kajillion times. And the secondhand embarrassment of that show makes my skin crawl. Like, I literally physically cringe and want to run out of the room. Like, I hate it. And so books like that, shows like that are not my cup of tea. <laughs> so I get why people love this one because that is their taste. But unfortunately, it is not mine. And I am very sad about it. But unfortunately, I don't think based off of this book, Tegan Hunter is for me. A book that I did not finish is Pretty Bride by Katie Wilde. Katie Wilde is a fantasy paranormal uh, novella writer that I really enjoy, that I just pick up one of her books when I want to escape in, into something and I need a break from my typical reading. And she doesn't have that many books, so I like slowly pace myself with her books, like every now and then I'll pick up one of her books. But I DNF'd it at 46%. 
just number one, I wasn't really feeling it. This is a novella, a part of her um, Rags to Riches series. Um, it's like a hundred something pages. And I just wasn't feeling it. I found it, I was very bored. And so when it got to a point where they're like, the characters are like stranded in a boat together. I don't remember how they got to this point. It's a fantasy romance novella. They're stuck on this boat, like this dinghy basically. And they're trying to get to land. And all I read was, oh, I see a shark coming. And like there was a shark coming and I DNF'd it. If y'all don't know, sharks are my biggest phobia ever. I know, very irrational. I understand. It's very irrational. I know there's not a lot of shark attacks out there. I understand that. I can't help the way my brain works. I am terrified of them. Literally, if a shark picture of a great, it's specifically great white sharks. Okay, I had a nightmare, a reoccurring nightmare of one as a child chasing me. And so there are no no for me. <laughs> So anytime I even read about a shark, even if it's not a great white shark, I picture a great white shark in my brain. I can look at like hammerhead sharks and all the other sharks. I know I'm going off a shark tangent right now. I'm so sorry. But I can like look at other sharks and be fine. It's specifically great white sharks that I'm just like, the, the, seeing them physically, reading about sharks, all I can visualize is a great white shark and it freaks me out. Anyway, enough about that. I DNF'd it because I was bored and then a shark was coming and I was like, no, sayonara, not ready for that. So. Yeah. I then ran a suite on The Greek by Talia Hebert. This is her third book in her, um, what series is this? Just for him series. This is basically a fake dating, fake girlfriend romance between um, Nicholas and Aria. Um, they get in this fake dating relationship because he like meets her and he's utterly like obsessed with her. And Aria has a lot of trauma with men and dating um, because her ex-boyfriend tried to kill her best friend. <laughs> So she's like, no, no to men, like, get away, no. Um, and Nick is just like totally obsessed with Arya and thinks she's the most stunning woman ever. But then he finds out a way to like keep her close to him is by being his fake girlfriend on a vacation with a bunch of his soccer buddies. He's a famous soccer player. And they go, I think to Spain, they vacation in Spain and she pretends to be his girlfriend. And then she figures out, oh, he tricked her basically to be close to her, blah, blah, blah. But he's like in love with her and she's in love with him now. It's this big spiel. I gave this three stars. It's one of my least favorite Talia Hibberts. I just felt like it was being very monotonous, if that makes sense. There wasn't like anything going on, even in the romance. I normally don't need like heavy plot elements to have me interested in a romance. That's why I freaking love Radiance over there. Like there's not much happening, but I freaking love it because of the couple and the romance. There's progression and so many things going on with them internally that I love. This book, I felt like just like, a hamster wheel going with their thoughts they just kept thinking the same things over and over and over again and nothing was progressing until the end chunk and i was just kind of bored which is so sad because tally hibbert is like top five favorite authors ever but this is a part of her series that's kind of like one of her earlier works and so i haven't been obsessed with this series unfortunately you know but i have one more book to read in the series and i'll be done and i've heard great things about the fourth one so i then read silver fox by cassie mint this is about kara and galen kara has been galen's assistant for quite a few years he's like a big millionaire boss man she has been pining over him for the whole time that she's worked for him and she has no clue that galen feels the exact same way about her but he doesn't ever want to reveal his feelings because number one he's her boss and also there's a giant age gap between the two of them and he's like no no this girl does not deserve a way older man who is graying anyway this is a, a very short novella about the dam like breaking between the two and them revealing their feelings and getting together i really now want to pick up some silver fox romances because this was just hot is fun entertaining i really liked it for tropes in here it's a novella it's on kindle limited you have a silver fox it's a workplace romance uh there's definitely pining or longing and it is an age gap i gave this one four out of five stars oh he has decided to grace us with his presence you want to say hello ali to the people say hello ali he can look out the window he's looking at the cars <laughs> driving by but he's definitely a needy lap dog he he just needs to sit in people's laps, I swear, or he'll cry like a little baby. So we do not want that. So he will be in my lap for the rest of this video, probably. The next book that I ended up picking up is Dangerous Duke by Scarlett Scott. This is her 
third, yes, third book in her League of Duke series. This was a buddy read with Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings. This was such a fun buddy read. Um, we've now decided to read like one book in the series every month until we finish the series. Rachel and I have become totally obsessed with Scarlett Scott and her historicals. Like she is so good and she's on KU and her audios are fantastic. I don't know why more people haven't been reading her books because she's an amazing historical author. I've been loving her. I feel like she's also, <laughs> hello. I feel like she's also very unique in her writing style. Like the beginning kind of threw me off a little, this book did because you're like, you're thrown right into a situation. You're not like slowly brought into it. You're like thrown right into the situation. Literally they bump into each other and kiss like page one and I'm like whoa how did this happen you know and so I feel like her writing style is very unique anyway let me talk about the summary okay um this one is about Griffin the Duke of Strathmore and he is being framed for a crime he did not commit this series is called the League of Dukes series and so um there's a bunch of dukes in British society that are part of this league they're kind of like spies and uh, Griffin was a part of this league and his comrades, a part of this league, thought that he betrayed them and committed this crime when he did not. And so one of the other guys in the league is keeping him under house arrest in his house. And so while staying there, he literally falls into the lap of the Duke who's having him under house arrest little sister. Her name is Violet and she cannot help herself and she completely falls in love with the man that is staying in her house and she can tell that this man did not commit this crime. Like she knows and she's gonna try her hardest to find out who actually did it. But when Griffin sees her, he sees Violet as an opportunity to get out of this situation. He knows that he did not commit this crime but no one's gonna believe him. He knows this. He's been framed. And so he sees Violet as a tool to help him escape and he convinces her to marry him, which she's all for because she's falling for this man, but she doesn't know that he has an ulterior motive, that he does not feel this way for her yet. They run away together. They even, no, they have this plot where um, he fake kidnaps her by like having a knife in her throat, like pretends to like take her out of the house and like kidnap her. And she's like, she knows what's going on the whole time. <laughs> like pretend that he's kidnapping her and they run away and get married together. This book is very entertaining. This is the crying I'm talking about. This dog. <laughs> okay, he's out. He's out. My god, I don't know what's up with him. <laughs> I really enjoy this one. There were so many iconic moments in here. Firstly, like the first chapter where Griffin actually falls into her lap. And then there's also a scene where he cooks for her. <gasps> Iconic. And then him falling in love with Violet in and of itself is amazing because he didn't expect to. And it started out as kind of like a, a bad thing, you know, him like trying to trick her to marry him. Um, give me a second, please, buddy. Let me finish this one book and I'll let you out of the room. <laughs> and there's also an amazing groveling scene, so... There you have it. Um, for tropes in here, you have Dukes, it's forbidden. Um, it's forced proximity. There is great banter and it is historical. I give this one four to five stars just because I have loved other books in the series more than this one. So and I had so much fun buddy reading this with Rachel. I can't wait to read more of the books in the series with her. Okay, Ollie got his wish. He is out of the room now. <laughs> he cries to come in. And the moment I shut the door, he cries to leave and vice versa. Watch in a couple minutes. He'll be crying to come back in here. <laughs> The next book that I read is my only five star for this video, which is Stolen Touches by Neva Altaj. I loved this, okay? This is her fifth book in her Perfectly Imperfect series, and oh my word. Oh, I loved this. So I got this as an arc. I read it early. I'm on uh, Neva Altaj's arc team, very graciously. Thank you so much. Um, and man, this book knocked me out of the water. I loved this. This one and book two are definitely my favorites in the series. If you don't know about this series, Neva Altaj is writing a mafia romance series. Each book is about 200 something pages and there's like disability and mental health rep in every single one of her books. And I love that. This is the romance between um, Malene and Salvatore. Malene is actually the sister to the heroine from book two, which is my other favorite book in the series. So I guess I just love these sisters. <laughs> they have a, a very interesting meeting. <laughs> Malene is a nurse and Salvatore is at 
the hospital to get a routine checkup and he's in the parking lot like getting ready to get in his car and he sees Malene like run outside she's a nurse and she ends up delivering a baby in the parking lot and she asks for his jacket to wrap the baby in and he's just like silent gives it to her and is like who is this woman that is commanding me to do like I don't no one commands me to do stuff like who is this woman because Salvatore is actually a mafia boss so Salvatore from that moment is very 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 interested in her literally starts stalking her sneaks into her house puts cameras all around her house <laughs> to watch her every single move at the beginning he doesn't even know that Malene is a part of a mafia family and then when he realizes this he's like this is the perfect opportunity um he contacts her family and arranges them to get married. Malene is distraught. She doesn't know who Salvatore is. She doesn't know that this man is stalking her. She doesn't know that this guy is the guy that she met in the parking lot. So when they meet, her and Salvatore meet officially for the first time before they get married, she is like, oh no. Oh, no, no, no. She is not happy about this situation. And so this is an arranged marriage between the two of them. Salvatore is one of the most overprotective heroes I have ever met ever. And I love him. Like two scenes that live in my head rent free from this book is Malene sleeps in like big t-shirts to bed. I do that too. And some of them are from her ex-boyfriends because they just leave them there and they're big and comfy, you know? She's moved into his house at this point because they have to get married. And Salvatore's like, whose shirt is that? Is that yours or is that an ex's? She's like, oh, I think it's an ex's. And he immediately goes into her closet, takes all of her t-shirts, like her sleep t-shirts, throws them in the garbage, goes to his closet and puts all of his t-shirts in her closet so she can wear them instead. And this whole time she's like following him, like screaming at him, like, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. They have a very good bantering relationship. Salvatore is again, very overprotective and he gets like, feels ill and violent if he does not know where um, Malene is 24 seven every minute of every day. And he gets like, kind of like unhinged because of it. And so he gets her this beautiful bracelet but inside is a GPS. And so he can just watch where she is on his phone constantly. <laughs> There's also an amazing cat. I freaking love him. He's like a stray cat who kind of like adopted Malene in her apartment. He is just an amazing, like hilarious piece of the book. And Salvatore's relationship with this cat is to die for. <laughs> this is definitely a win for Neva Altaj. Thank you so much for sending me an early copy. I loved this. There's trigger warnings in here for definitely, if you know about mafia romances, everything about the mafia, what comes with the mafia. So like shootings, guns, blood, torture, gore. For tropes, it's an age gap romance, it's mafia. Um, it's about a married couple. The heroine is a nurse, it's a possessive hero. There's disability representation. The hero is an amputee and he has nerve damage in his hand. Um, so he's not able to move his hand or feel anything with it. And he wears a glove often. And then he also has a prosthetic leg. He stalks her. So a stalker romance. Salvatore definitely falls into the category of toucher. And I will unalive you. So I love I love those types of mafia men. I loved this. I gave it five stars, obviously. Next, I read The Orc from the Office by Kate Pryor. This is her second book in her Claws and Cubicle series. These are like workplace monster romances that are just super, super fun. So the couple for this one is Janice and Kent. Janice is a human and Kent is a orc who works in IT at this company that Janice works at. And Janice is having like a little bit of trouble opening this filing cabinet in her office. And Kent just happens to walk by and it's like, hey, do you need some help? Let me help you. And they're both trying to open this cabinet and her elbow kind of like goes like this with the cabinet and her elbow kind of like hits him in the nose and it's an accident and his nose just starts gushing blood she's like oh my gosh I'm so sorry little does she know that sparks a mating ritual and mating urges within orcs whoever draws blood from an orc sparks this mating bond and so the two of them get very very hot and bothered because of the bond in the air you know like the bond between them it sparks and this is a little bit difficult for them hr has to get involved and everything so um the two of them are trying to break or not break but like let the bond fizzle out um because like you're not allowed to date a co-worker but things obviously change it's a romance book um, this was very entertaining and it was really cute because Janice and Kent are very awkward at first and I kind of love those romances where they're a little bit awkward and don't know what to do at first and 
they fall in love afterward. I thought this was a very unique take on like faded mate and mate romances in general, um, especially with like the rituals and stuff like that. I can't wait to read more in this series. I think I've read all of Kate Pryor's books. I only think, I think she only has like three books out right now and I really, really enjoyed her writing. If you have not checked her out yet, please do. For tropes, this is Forbidden. It's on Kindle Limited. It's a monster romance. It's an office workplace romance. There are orcs, it's a novella, and there is definitely a size difference. I ended up giving this book four out of five stars. Next, I read Art and Soul by Brittany Cherry. I just want to say that I read this. This will be in my five star prediction vlog in uh, the later half of this month at the end of the year. Um, and yeah, this is Brittany Cherry's kind of like YA emotional, obviously, romance. And yeah, it takes place in high school. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. <laughs> I then decided to pick up Never Kiss a Duke by Megan Frampton. I DNF'd this one. I think this girl owns like a gambling den or something. And this Duke isn't a duke anymore he gets like stripped of his title and ends up working for her or something along those lines i was very bored so i dnf'd it at 40 percent a new release that i decided to pick up is astrid parker doesn't fail by ashley herring blake this is her second book to delilah green doesn't care which i loved is one of my favorite books of the year for sure and you met astrid in that book she is the stepsister to delilah green this is about her getting this job she's a house like interior designer and she gets this job to design this in and there she meets um the other heroine of this book it's a sapphic romance uh what is her name jordan i think it's jordan um she meets jordan there and um they very much bump heads um they do not really get along and so it's kind of like an enemies to lovers or dislike disdain to lovers romance um it's all i want to leave you with because i don't want to spoil anything, but I thoroughly enjoyed this one, but I didn't love it as much as Delilah Green, unfortunately, but I still feel like it's a good read if you really want to pick it up. For this one, uh, you have a groveling scene. So there's groveling in here. It's hate to love. There's an, it's a workplace romance, kind of. Um, it's opposites attract. They are on a reality, like, kind of like HGTV, HGTV kind of show, reality show. And so yeah, I gave this one four out of five stars. I then read Cursed Prince by C.N. Crawford. Uh, this is her first book in the Night Elves trilogy. I just saw this on Libby one day and I was like, oh, that looks interesting. I've heard some good things about C.N. Crawford. She's a fantasy romance author. The only series that she had on my Libby was this one. So the Night Elves trilogy. And this one was interesting yeah. to say the least. So Marak is this magical being we hear on the cover. He's this magical being that has um, been in prison for a thousand years. He also has a curse put on him and he is a being without a soul. He ended up putting his soul in this ring before he was imprisoned and he like put like a spell on it to where the only person that could find this ring is his fated mate and then by some means the fated mate would bring the ring to him. So that's just what happens. Uh, the heroine in here, Allie, is a night elf and she ends up robbing a bank. And when she robs the bank, she finds this ring. She gets caught by robbing the bank and gets put in the same prison as Maroc. <laughs> and they're like cell neighbors. Things kind of go from there. They go on this journey together. And that's all I want to say. <laughs> this one is also very interesting because this takes place on Earth. But it's filled with paranormal fantasy magic filled with like our world is filled with, like elves and powers and magicalness like it really reminded me of crescent city when it came to the world where like there's like modern day things because it's take place on our world but there's magical elements and magical creatures i really like how cian crawford like put together our world and used our world to like make the setting you know however i felt like i was very confused <laughs> I was really confused reading this and I don't like doing like feeling that way like during a Sergio Mass book I do feel confused at times but I still understand for the most part like I get the gist of it this one I was just felt like it was very discombobulated if that makes sense so um it was okay I don't know if I will continue on with the series but I gave this one 3.5 stars and the last book that I read in November is Fixer Upper by Cassie Mint this is a part of the Heart of a Wounded Heroes like series that a bunch of authors have contributed to. So this is just a forbidden romance. <laughs> this guy is a war veteran and his best friend ended up dying um, while they were overseas and he gets left this lake house in the will from his best friend. He goes to the lake house and he sees his best friend's little sister there and they fix up the lake house together and they fall in love but he thinks like his best friend wouldn't approve of him dating his little sister and so he's trying to like keep his distance but she really wants him and he really wants her and yada 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 it was okay i gave it three stars it was just 
not my favorite Cassie Mint, unfortunately. So anyways, there you have it. Those are all the books that I read in the later half of November. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a green heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.